find happiness, which I love, is they define it as the joy we feel striving towards our potential. I love that definition. Happiness is the joy we feel striving towards our potential. Because joy is something you feel in the ups and downs of life. Even when things are not pleasurable, you can experience joy. And it happens on the way to the potential, not once we reach it. What we found is if you can move away from the idea that happiness is mere pleasure in short term to something that's joy on the way to growth, what we find is a dramatically different vision of what human beings can actually be experiencing and how we use our brains. In order to show you that, I have to start in a terrible place. Because um, when I first got into doing this research, they said, Sean, whatever you do, if you're out speaking to companies and organizations, um, especially in a place like Vegas where people have been out late, I'm sure, having a lot of fun, just don't start with a lot of graphs or data or research. But where I want to start us with today is a graph. <laughs> This graph looks boring, but this graph is the reason that I get excited and wake up every day, which means I live an extraordinarily exciting life. <laughs> Especially because this is a fake graph. I found this on Google Images. <laughs> I don't even know what they're graphing here. <laughs> but the reason I love this graph is because it shows us why science is actually so wrong most of the time about you. Because if I got this data back studying the people that are here in this arena right now, I would be thrilled. Because look, there's very clearly a trend that's going on there in the data, and that means that I can get published, which is all that really matters. <laughs> the fact that there's one weird red dot that's up above the curve, there's one weirdo in this arena. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> Everyone knows who you are. That's no problem. <laughs> that's no problem because I'm going to delete you. <laughs> We can delete you because we assume that you're a measurement error. And I know that you're an error, well, because you're messing up my data. <laughs> One of the very first things we teach people in economics, in statistics, in business, and government courses, is how in a statistically valid way can we eliminate the weirdo in the room? How do we eliminate the person who's messing up my line of best fit? Because what I normally care about is the average. I'd like to find out how many aspirin or Advil the average person should take if they get a headache. And we should already start to see a problem. Because if you hold up the bottle and look at it, regardless if you're 90 pounds or 250 pounds, the back of the bottle says, yeah, about two. Two should do it. Right? Because what we're interested in is what the average person should take. But as soon as we start asking questions that you're asking, as soon as we ask questions about how do we raise up levels of uh, happiness within our lives? How do we raise levels of engagement, productivity? How do we raise... Um, sales, or creativity, or musical ability, or athletic ability, all those are potential questions. And what we found is, and I believe you've seen it, is that by studying people in this way with that method, what we've been doing is we've been creating the cold to the average. If I ask a question like, how fast can a child learn how to read in the classroom? Science is going to answer to how fast does the average child learn how to read in the classroom, then we tailor the classes right towards the average. Forgetting the fact that, of course, many of you are much faster than the average, much slower than the average. The other part that's forgetting is that most people are not average. Average is an imaginary line we draw on the data, and most people are not there. We're actually scattered all around the average, which is why that graph is a fake graph. Now, the reason I think this is interesting is because, especially if you fall below that average in a company, 